Security purchased a 757. Did you hear about this? No. Why do, what do they need a 747 for? <laughs> no, no, no. They, so they, they went to Boeing and purchased a fully loaded 757. <coughs> Flew it to an airfield somewhere under Department of Homeland Security control. And their cybersecurity analysts went through and compromised the flight controls via an air gap. So they sat on the tarmac without any insider information, insider controls, or any type of connections to the aircraft itself and compromised it. Wow. They used radio frequencies to connect into the antenna system uh, and then piggybacked through uh, other sources to gain access to everything from avionics, flight controls, uh, you name it, they had full reign. Now, they did this in 2016, a year ago. Wow. They presented their findings, and do you know what the security analysts at Boeing said? Oh, yeah, we knew about that already. <laughs> Nonchalantly just said, yeah, it's been like that for years. And we knew about it. And they knew about it, but there's nothing they can do to fix it because it's the, the mechanism in which, uh, like, the transponder system works on and um, air navigation works on and avionics. And uh, there's a whole other plethora of systems that, like, do you remember when flight, um, the Malaysian Air Flight 370 disappeared? Yeah. Right? So some of the, the questions that came up with that is, the, the, one of the main reasons why they can't find it is it was beyond land-based radar uh, signature, right? Mm -hmm. It was out there somewhere. But then they said, well, this thing reports back its position and a few other vital uh, information via satellite relay. But that, was, that particular system was manually turned off. Then there was the beaconing system that um, will report its uh, location and again a couple of key other avionic uh, pieces of information to any aircraft in the vicinity that system was turned off so now the question became how do you turn those off and they're like oh well that's really easy you have to go down into the belly of the machine uh, into the aircraft to compartments that are located between uh, the actual um, uh, cargo deck and the flight deck itself, like where the passengers would reside. And in there, in the nose there, is all of the uh, controlling units. And you have to go through, uh, it takes about 10 minutes uh, through this process to turn these things off. And they're like, okay, so basically what you're telling us is somebody went down there and purposefully turned these devices off because they had to go down there to do it. And they're like, yeah. So we can't find the plane anywhere because they turn those things off. Interesting. Yeah. So does, so does that mean that it was more of an inside job that somebody knew? Or is it that the plane just went off the radar sooner or fell sooner or something along those lines? Well, that's the thing is um, the beaconing system would have reported – um, there, there's a, a time value that it's supposed to report back in, and it reported – uh, three times after they lost actual radio communication and then just disappeared. That's how they knew that it made a an abrupt left turn and right. went in the opposite direction of where uh, the autopilot was had designed it to go, like where the flight plan had, had laid out the route that it was supposed to fly to. So they were under that, as soon as they made the, that sharp left, you know, it pinged three more times and then completely disappeared. And they were like, why does a plane make a sharp left and then disappear X amount of, you know, time afterwards? <laughs> so, yeah, interesting things. Yeah, that's uh, somewhat scary a little bit. But, you know, it's, it's interesting because all of these things that can be compromised so easily – 
it's not it's not necessarily easy. I think some of them, like you, you've seen them hack into cars, right? Right. So they've hacked into cars, and now we're talking about having driverless cars. Well, what about them getting hacked into, and, and what is the security around those? And everybody will tell you, I'm sure Google's going to say, yeah, the security around our stuff's pretty good. Uh, or really good because they want you to buy it. Just like Apple says, hey, our facial recognition can't be hacked. And then somebody goes and hacks it with a mask. And they said it couldn't right. be hacked with a mask. You know, and it's like, so are we well, trusting this? Well, here's here's another one, right? Tesla. So the entry-level Tesla car gets like, let's say, 250 miles per charge, right? Right. The hurricane that rolled through uh, Florida Keys right before Ignite, Tesla came out and went, yeah, hey, you know what? We need to push an update to these cars so that they can get a 300-mile range out of the same charge so that they can get to um, uh, a safe distance, right? Now, you have to remember, there's a hurricane. They sent this signal out. It bounced around all the cars, updated the car. They got 300 miles out of a charge. Off to safety they went. So the, the question then becomes, um, why, A, did they not have that range to begin with, right? And, B, uh, how did you update things that aren't plugged into networks of any kind? Well, that's the question, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, and they were like, well, we just sent an update, and it bounced around all the cars, and they all got updated. Yeah. Yeah, that so means that's the, it means it's wider open than you think. Right, or they're running something that piggybacks on some other signal that uh, can be, that may have a two-way communication other than what we assume to be like a cellular signal of some kind. So just interesting things on the, and like you said, right, those those cars themselves, they are already somewhat autonomous, right? Right. Those Teslas monitor uh, any kind of traffic patterns in front of you, and they'll swerve out of their way so that they don't hit, uh, you know, they can sense where there's a, an accident or impending difficulties within the roadway, and they'll make uh, automatic adjustments unbeknownst to the driver. So, yeah, that's some crazy stuff. And like you said, those could be easily compromised depending on whatever their source is. Thank you so much for watching another episode of Trainers Underground. If you have any requests for future episodes, please go to our website, www.learnsecurity.org, and fill out the comment section. If you found this video informative, please like below. We would greatly appreciate that. If you would like to catch a future episode, just follow this channel or find it on our website, www.learnsecurity.org. If you have any comments about the, today's episode, please comment below. Again, thank you so much. And remember, stay safe and secure.